Wow, that's crazy. So if that wasn't clear enough, last Saturday, I was supposed to be at soccer with my son, and that was canceled due to the rain. And so I was also invited to uh, a Zoom meeting for the King Movement. Some of you guys have heard me talk about the King Movement, led by Chris Broussard, who's a... Um, uh, He's a sports analyst, and he started this ministry across the country, this movement. And uh, when I checked the invitation for the Zoom meeting that I was now able to be on because soccer was canceled, whose email did I see on there? But Kevin Nickerson. I text him, I'm like, dude, are you going to be in this Zoom tomorrow? He's like, yeah, bro. And I'm not, not like hundreds of guys in the Zoom. It was seven, seven participants in the Zoom. It's like, all right, God. You're, you're putting us in the same Zoom room and all these other rooms. You want us to, to make room for each other and, and grow this friendship. A uh, couple of special things about Kevin, and then I'll shut up and let you hear from him or from the Lord through him. Um, one of the coolest things about him is I've heard him introduce, I've heard you introduce yourself uh, to people several times. And one of the first things you mention, you always mention your family first. And you always say, man, I got four kids. I wasn't expecting that you were going to bring all four of them with you today. That's awesome. I love that. And like this dude's got a pretty cool resume, okay? He worked with FCA for years, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. That's a ministry that we support. Um, he has uh, Game Breakers Academy, which is a sports mentoring program, which is super cool. Um, and uh, But you always talk about your family first. And that's something that resonates with us here, man. So I, I respect that about you. Another cool thing that I've respected about Kevin Nickerson is last week we were on a Zoom room and somebody noticed that he had the um, the Rams logo as like the, uh, you know, the background or whatever, the screensaver. And they were like, man, hey, I got a bunch of Rams gear. I'd be happy to shoot it to you. And Kev's just humble. He's like, oh, that's cool, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. But a little bit later in the in the in the meeting, it was revealed that Kev doesn't really need Rams gear because one of one of the several things that he does, uh, ministries he's called to, is he's the chaplain for the Rams. <laughs> and so when that was revealed, it was like, oh yeah, you don't need no Rams gear. You <laughs> think you got the connections, bro? You're good. But I I share that story, not not necessarily to celebrate the accolades of working with the Rams, which is super cool, undeniably. But what's cooler is the humility and the love for your family that I've observed. So all that to say, Kev's going to talk to us about who's got next, and he's going to share more about his story, man. So come on up, brother. Have fun. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, man. I am fortunate to be you know, in the same room with Doc, you know, great minds think alike. And uh, and I'm just honored to be here in the house of God this morning. I don't know if you guys understand how special it is to be in the house of God. You guys understand that? It's important to be here. And yes, I do have my four children here with me today. So what well, Lydia's on the end. She's my oldest girl, Saka or, or Zacharias or Sakarias. Uh, he's my oldest son, Hannah with the, with the phone. Uh, that's my youngest daughter. And then Gideon is in the back and my wife, BB, she would be here, but she's working. Uh, she's a labor and delivery nurse, um, at Kaiser. And then she also is a professor at APU. So, uh, she would be here, uh, but she's not. And so I, I brought my, my team with me. That's my team right there. And so, uh, that we, we do we do this together and, and as Doc said, uh, my ministry first is to the Lord and then to my family. Uh, and I'm not perfect at either of it, at, but uh, I'm definitely in the process of, of uh, with God in this whole thing. And so I'm excited to be able to share about who got who has next. And I was about to say who got next because that's what we say on the hoop court, right? Uh, who, who we don't say hey who. Who's going? Who's going to play next? Or who? <laughs> hey, are you? Are, you know, we we when we get on the hoop court, they say, "Who got next, man? Who got next? Who's who's up?" And when Doc shared with me the theme uh, of this great place, 
uh, I was like, oh, man, this is exciting. This is exciting. And then when he said, hey, our mission is to, to make disciples or be disciples and make disciples, I was like, oh, man, you're right in my wheelhouse. I love this, this, this conversation, and I think it's important for us to continue to have because that is the great uh, commission that God has given to all of us, to not just for the pastor or the preacher or whoever is here leading, but it's for all of us to go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them right? Teach them to obey everything that I've taught you, right? And, and the cool thing is that God, that Jesus said that he would be with us all the way to the end. And so there was, that's a great mandate for us as believers, regardless if you are here up front or if you're in the pews, uh, to make disciples and to be disciples. And so um, we're going to talk about that a little bit, um, but again, this pickup, this who, who, who has next? And when I, when I thought about this, because I used to hoop, man. I used to, I used to play basketball for real. I was a, a decent basketball player in my day. Uh, but I really had a lot of fun on the asphalt, yeah. right? On the blacktop, as people say, I had a lot of fun on the blacktop. And I just remember uh, always going to the courts and saying, hey, who got next? And as a, as a guy that wanted to be first or had the down, as we say, I was always going around looking for who I could pick on my team. Now, I didn't just pick up anybody now. You know, I, I learned later that it's okay to pick the one that's not as good because God will make, God would allow my skills or the skills of our teammates to elevate that individual. So uh, when I was playing in, you know, when I was younger, I would pick the best that I could pick. I would pick, I wouldn't pick the people that, you know, had the same skill set as me. I would pick different people that had different skill set. I would look for a big, I would look for well, a center, somebody that's bigger than me. Obviously, I'm, you know, my frame, I'm not 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, you know, so I want a big guy so I can throw the ball to him. I want somebody that can shoot. I wanted somebody that was, you know, that will fill me out, right? Because, again, the purpose of having next is to play all day. When you get on the court, you want to stay on the court. And I feel like it's the same for discipleship. When we are when we are looking when we are being discipled by God and we are looking to disciple others, it's not just for our own benefit. It's so that we can continue the legacy of Christ, so we can stay on the court all day, right? Because we can't do this by ourselves. And I'm t and I'm telling you, I'm standing here today not because of uh, any strength of my own, but it was because of of great men and women that poured into me and walked with me in this life. And so I want to just con continue to encourage you today. And, and, here's a, and if I had a reason for you to listen to me today and listen to my words, it's because there are people, not only in the pews, people in the streets, people at different high schools, people at your, at your work that are in desperate need of deliverance. They're in desperate need of someone coming alongside of them and walking with them and showing them what it looks like to be obedient to Christ and to come under his authority. There are people there. I mean, there are people dying in the pews right now. They show up to church every day, every Sunday. Now, I know this is not this church because the, 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 the mission is to be disciple and make disciples. So I, I'm, I'm just I'm just encouraging you today. But I know that there's people in the pews that are dying apart from discipleship. OK, and so listen to me as I want to encourage you. And, and, and I decided to look at um, Moses and Joshua. I love Moses and I love Joshua. And I just realized how how their relationship, I believe, lines up with the mission that's taking place here at this church. I love their story. Uh, man, there's, you can go throughout the whole Pentateuch, the, the first five books of the Bible, and you can see their relationship. And there are some cool things that I want to pull out. The first thing that I want to pull out is that discipleship, it has to start with us first. It starts with you. It starts with me. Right? The second thing that I want to make sure that we, that, that, that we understand is that the people that we're discipling, we need to make sure that we're teaching them to listen to God and learn to follow God with their whole heart. Okay? And then the third thing that I want to talk about is that we need to make sure that we're calling people up and calling them out. 
I know some pastors, man, they want to keep people down. They don't want to call people up. I know some people, they don't want them to be better. You know, there's sometimes like, man, I don't want him to be better than me. Or I don't want her to be better than I am. And I think that's totally against what God desires for us. Right. Even Jesus, the, the, the greatest disciple of all, has said, man, I, when I leave, there's going to be somebody that's coming after me. That if I you need this, you need this Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. And so if Jesus, the greatest disciple, said, man, hey, man, I got somebody even better that's going to that's gonna help you out. Who are we? And so we need to learn to call people up and call them out. You understand what I'm saying? And so just let, let's let's have some fun in the scripture this morning. All right. And so I wanted to I wanted to and I know I messed up the tech team because I told them just Deuteronomy 31. But I'm going to start in Exodus chapter 33. And I'm so sorry because I need you to understand this, that 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 discipleship starts with me. It starts with you. And I need to because I want to make sure that you see Moses uh, in the light of a, of a person that was discipled by God. Exodus 33, 7 through 11 tells us that now Moses took a tent and pitched it outside the camp at a distance from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting. So I want to know and I want to ask you rhetorically, do you have a tent of meeting? Is there a place where you go and you meet with God on a regular basis? Moses carried around a tent. Right. He pitched it. So that took work. And he called it the tent of meeting. And that was the place where he met God. And anyone who wanted to consult the Lord would go to the tent of meetings that was outside the camp. Wherever Moses went, whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would stand up, each one at the door of his tent, and they would watch Moses until he entered the tent. Now, again, discipleship starts with, with me. Discipleship starts with us. You got to understand that people are watching what you do. People are watching. We're going to talk about that a little bit. We got to talk about that. I'm learning the greatest lessons being a father, understanding that my kids take on the things that I do. More than what I say, they, they do what I do. If I'm lashing out and I'm being and I'm being loud and, and, and when I'm communicating, guess what they do to each other? They do the same thing. And so the people were watching him as he would go into the tent. And then when, when Moses entered the tent, here's the cool part. The pillar of cloud would come down and remain at the entrance to the tent and the Lord would speak to Moses. I got yeah, I don't know if you guys are tracking with me right here. This this, this discipleship. Now you. You can be discipled all, all day long by Doc. Doc can be up here, Pastor Doc. What do they call you, Pastor? Dude? What do they call you, Pastor Doc? Pa- Pastor Doc, Doc. I mean, I'm going to call you Pastor Doc in this, in this setting. But Pastor Doc, you can be discipled by Pastor Doc. You can be discipled by, by all the great people, men and women in your life. But if you are not speaking with the Lord yourself, it's going to be really difficult for you to get where God wants you to go. And so the Lord would speak to Moses. As all the people saw the pillar of cloud remaining at the entrance to the tent, they would stand up, then bow and worship each each one at the door of his tent. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks with his friend. Are we friends of God? I am a friend of God. Oh, man. Man, I man, I don't know. I no longer call you slave, but I call you friend. I want to know if we, are we friends of the Most High God? Is our conversation so rich that God that we can tell God anything? Tell who? So what? Somebody said something to me. You just said one of my made one of my points because God and I'm about to get off a little bit. But here's the deal: God is not calling us. As disciples, as people of God, to be to be perfect, God is just asking us to be honest. We need to stop hiding from God. There's no way that we can get everything from God and that God desires from us if we lie lying to God. Come on now. I see. I like this part. I like this. Lady. I like this church. 
I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. When I walked in, I was like, I don't know if these people are going to talk back to me now. <laughs> Come on, man. I didn't know what I was getting into this morning, man. But is your, is your relationship and your conversation with God so rich that, he, that, that, that it's like, oh, I'm talking, to my, I'm talking to my daddy. I'm talking to my bro. I'm talking to my friend. And then Moses will return to the camp. And he, here's the cool thing. Here, we gonna talk, here, here's, the, here's this beginning of this, this beautiful relationship. And it said the young man, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the inside of the tent. And so we're going to make some couple of points. Now, here's the deal. Keep going. You can clap if you want to. And so here's the deal. As disciples, as people that are being at that, because I'm just going to call us all disciples today, because that's what we desire to be. Right. I don't care how old you are. You can you can start discipling. And, and that and you know how we can start discipling by the way that we live our lives. We should have a vision for our lives that is so vivid, vivid that came from God that we want to hold on to, that we want to live a life that, that says, hey, I, I know where God is, is taking me and I know who God wants to bring with me. So let me live in such a way that allows people to see me and to see God. Are you guys tracking with me? And so we need to see legacy. We need to live a controlled life, a, a life that is restrained. And, and again, I'm not, and this is what I love about God. God does not put us um, in a box. God gives us these borders. He gives us these parameters, these guidelines that we can live in. And it said that who the son says free is free indeed. And so there's no, there's no change. There's no, no bounds on us, if you guys understand what I'm saying. But we should live a life that is controlled by the spirit that leads us to talk to the right people and to behave the right way. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so we need to understand that our behaviors and the actions that we take could build or tear down. And we can't afford to tear down. I have to look at my children again. And I'm, I like to be transparent. Like there's, there's different thoughts that take place in my mind all the time. I don't know about you, but I have different thoughts that take place in my mind every single day. But I have to make a decision. Not, not and here's the first thing, not just because of, of my children or because of my wife, but I got to think about how am I going to honor God? How is God has given me so much? And I'm going to mess it up because I have this thought. I have this impulse. And so you need to under, Tony Evans said it like this before. He said, he said, a mist from the pulpit. Now, I'm just because I'm here in the pulpit is like fog in the pews. And so for you, the things that you say that you think are just a little, a, a little bit. May be fog for your children. It may be fog for your co-workers. It may be a fog. You might be causing a fog over your marriage. If you understand what I'm saying. And so we should be living our lives in such a way that people see the Lord God Almighty. We should be able to sing all my life. The Lord has been faithful and I will sing of the goodness of God. We should be able to see the resurrection of the resurrected Christ in the way that we live our lives. I don't know, man, I don't know if you guys are tracking with me now. I don't know if you're tracking with me this morning. Peter said it like this, man, as as disciples in second Peter chapter one, verses five to eight, it said that we must make every effort to supplement our faith with goodness. Goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly love and a brotherly affection and then brotherly affection with love. And this will keep us from being useless. And unfruitful. Do we want to be useful and fruitful in the kingdom of God? So we need to make sure that we supplement our faith with those things. Uh, Paul says it like this. He said that I discipline my body to bring it under strict control that after preaching to others, I may not be disqualified myself. 
Discipleship starts with you. Discipleship starts with me. Are we living in such a way that would not cause us to be disqualified? Man, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it, the, the, the enemy is here. Jesus said it like this. If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself or herself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Discipleship starts with you. Discipleship starts with me. S story. I have a young man uh, that I walk with. And he had a he had a pastor that he looked up to. He 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 put him on a pedestal. And, and I want to say this. Don't put your pastors on pedestals because we're people just like you. We're all the same at the foot of the cross. God, God doesn't love you more or less than he loves the pastor. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so this brother, he put put this pastor and we're talking about this mist from the pulpit becomes a fog. In, 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 in the pew. So this pastor, he, you know, he talks to him and he says, hey, we're having my wife and I, we're going to get a divorce. I'm like, man, I, I get it. I understand. But what he didn't realize was the, the moment that he told him that this young man started thinking about, well, if he can't do it. Then what about me? Should I? file for divorce no boy, no 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 here, let, let, here let's let's walk through this thing let's walk this thing out and by the grace of God thank the Lord that he's not getting divorced and, and he's changed but what I'm telling the, the point that I'm saying is that people are watching you and the things that we say and the things that we do it impacts the people that are that are around us and so we don't want to we don't want to create fog we want to be light And so here, I want to. I, I got this this week. I was at a I was at a conference this week. PAO, Professional Athletes Outreach, and, and this guy talked about it. His name was Glenn uh, uh, Packiam. I think that's how he said his name. But but he talked about uh, these are the type of relationships that all disciples or leaders, which you guys are, need. And he he compared them to. And, and I've seen other, you know, diagrams and things like. But this was the most recent one. It's kind of cool. And he, he he used the Lord of the Rings analogy, and I don't I'm not a Lord of the Rings guy. However, I like how he phrased this, and I, and I want to give this to you so you can understand because I want to make sure if discipleship starts with you and with me, then we need to make sure that we have the right people around us helping us continue to be who God wants us to be. Are you guys tracking? Yep. Okay, here we go. So here we go. He said that we need to have a sage. This person provides wisdom in key moments. We need to have a king or a queen, someone that tells us no. You can't have yes people all around you. Please don't. If you got yes people all around, if you got people that just tell you yes all the time, then, then we need to have a talk. You understand? Second, we need to have peers. Someone that knows what the fight is like. You need to have friends, someone that can walk with you and carry you. And then the last one you need is you need to have a healer, someone who can drain the poison and dress the wound. Now, here's the deal. Moses didn't have all of these, but he had people around him like God. He had Aaron. <laughs> yeah, he had God. <laughs> you know, if you have God, you know, God is, you know, covers it all. Healer, king, sage, all, all of that, you know. But he had God. He had a personal relationship with God. You saw it. He had Aaron, his brother. He had her. He had Miriam. He had Jethro. He had people all around him that allowed him to be who he was supposed to be. And so when it came to Joshua, Joshua was just getting a flood of information. And so I'm spending a little time here because I think it's so important for you to understand how important you are and how important your relationship with God is and how important your relationship to God is to God. God needs you. God wants us. We are his desire. We are his loved one. And so in order for us to, 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 to make disciples, we have to be discipled ourselves. 
Second thing is we need to uh, uh, teach to listen and to learn to follow God. And so in, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, uh, this is when uh, Joshua is about to take over and, Mo and God is telling Moses to, to gather the people together. And this is what you need to tell them. And he told Moses, this is what this, he told Joshua, this is what you need to tell the people. He said, gather the people, men, women, and dependents, and the, re and the resident aliens within your city gates so that they may listen and learn to fear the Lord your God and be careful to follow all the words of this law. Then their children who did not know the law will listen and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. And so here's the deal. Our responsibility is to teach and to show the people around us to follow God. It's God's responsibility to change the hearts and the souls of people so that they can live. And so guess what? We don't have that responsibility to take that heart of stone and turn it into flesh. So guess what? That, that, get, that relieves you of some pressure. Only thing it, only thing it does for you is cause you to live in, a, in, 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 a such, in such a way. I don't, know if this is, I don't know if this makes you excited to know that, that I don't have the responsibility to chase somebody's heart. We don't have the responsibility to change someone's heart. We put that all on God. We put that all on Jesus. We, we, we trust in the Holy Spirit to do that. So not, 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 our, not our deal. And so, and, and with that, it comes in. This, this is what it gives us the freedom to do. It gives us the freedom to entrust authority and responsibility to people. Are you, now you have to go through the, five, the first five books of the Bible to see this relationship actually play out. But here's a couple of opportunities. Here's a couple of, uh, of references to when, when, when people entrusted authority and responsibility. Jesus. Mark chapter 3. Here's the most important thing, too. You got to be with the people that you're with. You have to be with the people that, you, that you're with. Like my children will not be able to know who I am if I'm never with them. The young men that I that I work with in our organization would never know what it looks like to be with Jesus or to, to who I am if I'm not with them. And Jesus said that he said that he appointed 12 whom he also named apostles to be with him to send them out to preach. That cool thing he was with them who are you with who are you entrusting authority and responsibility to Moses and Joshua he had ops to grow and to critique you, you got to remember Joshua was with Moses at the tent of meetings Moses took Joshua when he was going up to Mount Sinai man these are key moments in Moses's career in his life in his ministry and guess who was with him Joshua, the one that he knew was going to be with him and was going to follow him, would, would, would succeed him. And so are, do we have people that we're with? Do we have people that we, that, that, God, that we know God has called for us to minister to and to support and to love? Are they with us? Are they able to see our life and how we live and what it looks like to actually be a child of God? Not just in theory, but in actual practice. Moses had Joshua with him every step of the way. Man, he, he, he Moses knew he wasn't no warrior. So he sent Joshua. He said, Joshua, you're going to fight this fight against the Amalekites. Now, I'm going to go up to the top of this mountain, and I'm going to pray. <laughs> but you're going to go down there, and you're going to fight. <laughs> but the cool thing, I don't know if you guys remember this part, but, but, but after the victory, God told Moses to tell Joshua, he said, make sure that you tell, recite this to Joshua. Because I need you, I need Joshua to remember this because he's the one that's going to come after you. He said, I'm going to totally blot out all the Amalekites. And I, now, again, we're going to talk about what it means to, to make sure that you're calling up and you're calling out because there's this element of encouragement. There's this, er, this, this element of letting and, 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 and assuring that, hey, even in the darkest days, that God's going to be with you. 
man, authority and responsibility. Joshua was one of the 12 spies, came back, gave a great report. Joshua was also one of the ones that was like, hey, man, these other guys are prophesying. They didn't come to the tent of me. They out here. And, and, and Moses was like, hey, man, chill out. <laughs> chill. It's all good. I, it's good. I want everybody to be able to prophesy and wish and worship God together. So it's all good. You, we, you don't got to go and beat nobody up. We, we good. And so when you're with people, when you're, when you're with the people that you love and the people that God has called to you, you get an opportunity to see them grow and critique them in their growth. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to us? The third thing is, and, and, and I think Doc, Pastor Doc wanted me to share a little bit of my story, and, and, I, and I'll go here just really briefly. I said it earlier that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for different people. And so there was a man, that was, he was a hero to me. His name was Coach Tim. And he was a young man. And remember I said, it, God ain't calling us to be perfect, he's calling us to be honest. And so Coach Tim wasn't perfect because Coach Tim gave me some bad advice. I mean, he gave me some... <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I know he's in heaven. He's so proud of me right now. I know he's so proud of me. But Coach gave me some bad advice, you know, just one time. I remember just one piece of bad advice. And I might share that, but I might not. But however, <laughs> however, Coach Tim did all of those things. And here's the crazy part. He wasn't even a man of faith at that time. He saw a young man that was hurt. He saw a young man that was broken. He saw, but he saw a young man with some skills. <laughs> I could play, I could, I could tote that football. He saw something in me. And he just took me along with him. He brought me into his home. He introduced me to his family. He, his daughter still calls me her big brother. We talk on the phone uh, 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 periodically. But he, he walked with me through my time when I, was, when, I, when I would get injured. He talked to me about women. He talked to me about all the things that, that I needed to hear as a young man growing up without his father in his house. He didn't only just talk to me about football. He talked to me about life. I learned a lot of hard lessons from Coach Tim. But he allowed me to be with him. He allowed me to, to make mistakes and he critiqued them. He would watch my film and he, not only just on the field, but he would watch my film. He would watch me from afar and be like, Kevin, why are you doing that? Before I married Bebe, my wife, my beautiful wife, I had to talk to Coach Tim. Tell me why you're doing that, son. Have you thought about this? What's going on? And so I'm, I'm, I'm and again, I'm telling you this because I'm here be, because of him. Game Breakers Academy would not exist if it wasn't for the life that Coach Tim lived and imparted into me. Now, again, he helped me physically. He was big on my books, but he wasn't a spiritual man. And so here's the deal. When we're calling people up and calling people out, we got to have a desire for them to be better than you are, than I am. I don't want my sons and my daughters to be at the level that I'm at. I want my sons and my daughters to be better than me. I want the young men and the young women that I mentor and disciple. I don't want them to just to start a, 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 a nonprofit organization or run a business. I want them to own the world. Because guess what? When they own the world, guess what? I get a little piece of that. <laughs> Not that I even care about that, but I, I, I mean, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. And so Moses called Joshua up, and then he called him out. Verse, uh, chapter 31, verse 7, and they said this. It said, then Moses then summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all of Israel, be strong and courageous for you, will, for you will go with this people into the land the Lord swore to give to their ancestors. You will enable them to take possession of it. The Lord is the one who will go before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or abandon you. Do not be afraid or discouraged.
you see Moses encouraging, endorsing, and assuring Joshua that God will be with him, that you are the right one for the job. You have everything that it takes. Don't be a detractor to the people that God is calling up behind you or around you. Call them up. Call them out. Give them responsibility. Trust them with some things that, that, that you might not necessarily want to do or things that you want to do, but they might can do it better. And so I, I used to think that discipleship was all on me. But I've learned different. Like I said, Coach Tim was my hero. My hero. And I'm building Game Breakers Academy on the lessons that he's taught. Now, here's the deal. The, the, the crazy thing was Moses wasn't able to get into the promised land. You guys know that. God didn't call us to be perfect. He called us to be honest. Moses wasn't able to get into the promised land. But even in that, he had enough wherewithal, he had enough faith, he had enough trust in, in Almighty God to call this young man up and set him on his way. He said, this is what you need to do. And right now, again, Coach Tim, the mental part, the physical part, but now I'm building on the spiritual part with Game Breakers Academy. Our, our pillars are we want to build you spiritually. That's, the, that's our foundation. We want you to be physically dominant. We want you to dominate on the field or, or the court or wherever you're at. And then we want you to be mentally sharp. We want you to be able to be in the world but not of the world. We want you to be have some worldly smarts and we want you to have some book smarts. But the foundation is the spiritual part now. Again, Coach Tim didn't give me that. Moses didn't give Joshua everything that he had. Joshua got some things not on his own, but from God. And Moses wasn't afraid to allow him to excel in those things. And so here I want to encourage you today. Number one, if you don't, if you don't have a place where you're meeting with God regularly, I need you to find one. I need you to get there. Because there's people around you that need that from you. Secondly, I need you to, 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 to call people up. If there's people around you that you know, and again, you can't, you, you, you can't uh, deal with people that God don't want you to deal with, but the people that you have access to, make sure you're calling them up and make sure you're calling them out. And I'll leave you with this. Discipleship should not be a transaction. Discipleship should be transformative and transferable. Discipleship should be transformative and transformable and transferable. Meaning the life that you live and I live should be transforming. As well as the people that we're dealing with, their life, you should see change. And guess what? Who got next, right? The transfer. Because now we get to transfer from generation to generation. Do you, are you guys tracking with me? So let's be disciples. And let's be disciples. Can I pray for you? Dude, I didn't even pray at the beginning. Hey. Sorry. I know better. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for... Uh, this morning and I thank you that your word is so true and it's so it's so real and it's, it's, it's so practical and I would ask that as we are living out the mission here that we would first have a desire to be discipled by you to be to be in your presence to be in the tent of meetings with you and secondly Lord I pray that you would call up people and bring people around us that we can love and that we can serve 
and that we can help grow so that we can continue this legacy of Christ for generations to come. Lord, I pray that if there's people in here that's carrying a heavy burden, that they would take your yoke upon them because it's easy in this life. Lord, I pray that if there is if there's any sin that is holding us back and that is preventing us from going out and living out the Great Commission, Lord, I pray that you would, would bind that and, that and that it will be confessed so that we can be healed and so we can move forward. Lord, I thank you, God, again for an opportunity to bring your word. I thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Turn yours off. Yeah, turn yours off. Yeah. You turn it off. Bam. Got it. All right. Um, all right, Kev. Sweet. Man. Uh, Brian, what's your notes looking like? Did you bring your, your journal? Let me see that let's see that notebook, man. My my notes, this is the announcement sheet. Like this is <laughs> these are my notes, man. That was man, that's so good. Hey, uh, Kev, man. Um uh, I've heard CJ say something a couple times. He says, uh, it's one thing for, for us as, as, as people who are communicators for the Lord to step into arena and people to walk away and be like, man, that guy was a beast, man. That's cool. But, but greatness is when you step into an arena and communicate for God and people walk away and say, man, I'm a beast. I can go do this. Amen. Yeah, you did that, man. I'm, I'm sitting there taking notes like, man, thank you, Lord. I needed this. I can do this. And I'm walking away looking forward to uh, going to that tent of meeting and realizing discipleship starts with me. I'm walking away looking forward to helping others learn to listen to God and, and love him and follow him with their whole heart. And I'm, I'm walking away looking forward to calling others up and calling them out and encouraging them um, to be greater than, than, than I. So thank you for doing that for us, man. That was wonderful, wonderful to have you and your family. Um, I'm going to give a couple announcements. Hey, my hope is that you guys, uh, we have love lunch today. And so um, usually once a month we have communion and then we have a love lunch. Um, no obligation to stick around, but like this is a continued part of our worship if you can. So uh, we got we got some uh, enchilada casserole that Brianna Courtney threw down on. If you had that the last time, it was fire. So you might want to, you know, <laughs> you might want to consider that for lunch today. Um, but my hope is that we would sit and you know talk about these things um, that are going on. Um, if you are new. Uh, like apparently my son's new today. He's never visited the church before. Uh, never. <laughs> he filled out a connect card for us. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have already put it in the box. It's going to be super cute this week. My, 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 my wife opens up the box and is like, ooh, somebody new. Oh, it's Quincy. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wish I would have held on to it to model it for you guys. But there's a connect card in the back. If you're, if you're new, we, we don't like to embarrass you, but we just like to remind you of safe space. If you've never filled one of those out, we just want your information so we can stalk you. Um, and then, uh, so love lunch, what else we got? Uh, campus cleanup next, uh, next Saturday, the 11th, 9 to 12. Please come if you're available. If you're somebody that likes to get your hands dirty, um, please come. We got plenty of, plenty of work to be done. Um, and let me tell you something. Linda Cart's going to be there. Yeah, this, this beautiful woman is going to be this with the red sweater. She's going to be there getting her hands dirty. I don't know what that communicates to you passive aggressively in your soul, but uh, Linda Cart's going to be there putting in work. What does that say about what you're going to be doing next Saturday from 9 to 12? <laughs> All right. And then also uh, March 15th at 7 p.m. And here we have our congregational meeting. We go over to budget. We cast some vision. Um, and then we... we uh, we make some. We vote on making some decisions based on the recommendations of the elder nominating committee, which has been going really well. We we come together. We're we're a group of people that is reflective of of our community, praying and and hearing from the Lord, and we come together and talk it out to see 
who does have next, if there is somebody that's ready to be brought in as next. But then we also, you know, go to the elders with our, our recommendations on, on the future and what we're needing from them. So that's what's happening in there. So if you can be here at March, uh, on March 7th, March 15th, it's a Wednesday night um, at 7 p.m. Even if you're not like a voting, formal voting member of our community, we invite you to, to explore that and see what that's all about. Um, uh, because some of us are not voting members, but you're very much a member of our community. Like you should, you should be, I'm not trying to should on you. I don't like to do that, but really you, it's a good idea. Like if you're invested in this community, yeah, sure. We should be a part of that. So, um, I think that's it. Uh, bless you guys, man, to go, go away from here. Remembering that discipleship starts with me. Yeah. And you don't get to sit there and say, yeah, it starts with you. Doc. You're right. It does start with me. It starts with you too. Okay. And, and it's our responsibility to teach people to learn, to love and follow God with their, and listen with their whole heart. Right. And it's up to us to call people up, call people out, encourage them to be greater than us. So exciting. Um, Lord, thank you so much for a great morning. I pray that you bless the fellowship. Um, I pray that you continue to bless um, Kev and his family and his wife and, and all of the cool things that you've called them to do. Uh, thank you for the partnership this morning, the friendship. Um, I pray that they would leave fuller than they came. Thank you for him pouring out. Thank you for his team supporting him. I pray that you would bless them, Lord Jesus. Um, uh, yeah, we just give you, we give you thanks for, for a great morning and the cool things you're doing in our community. May we see you do even cooler things on Monday, Tuesday, and for the rest of the week. Uh, we look forward to meeting you in the tent, Lord Jesus. We love you. Amen. All right, y'all, go ahead and hang out, get some coffee, some donuts, some enchilada.